In this video, we're going to spend a little bit of time exploring the naming conventions that we see in the ring structures of sugars. To do so, we need to introduce two new terms. Okay, and these are terms out of organic chemistry, furan and pyran. Okay, so these are two molecules that exist. Furan is a five-membered ring that contains an oxygen. Pyran, similarly, is a six-membered ring that contains an oxygen. Okay, and these structures might look similar based on what you've learned in the previous couple of videos. And that's because when sugars cyclize, they adopt these general architectures. The only difference is they don't have the double bonds because the carbons are saturated. Okay, so the reason this is important is because when we name the cyclic form of sugars, we actually include this parent organic molecule in the name. So any sugar that adopts a five-membered ring, we call a furanose. So os because it's a sugar and furan because it adopts the five-membered ring that we observe in furan. The same thing goes with six-membered rings. We call these sugars pyranose. Okay, so the two examples we saw of furanoses over the last couple videos were D-ribose. And we also saw that when fructose cyclizes, it becomes a five-membered ring, so also D-fructose. And the one example of a pyranose we saw was D-glucose. Okay, and there are many other examples, but these are the ones that we've seen up to this point. Okay, the other really important thing that uh, we need to talk about is the chemistry around what's known as the anomeric carbon. Okay, um, and this is a hard term to define if I don't first show you some structures and explain what's up with the anomeric carbon. So let's do that. So what I want to first do is look at a form of glucose that we've seen in the past. And I'm gonna draw it in its linear form, but it's gonna adopt the geometry that we know that it eventually does when it gets into its pyranose form. So it's linear because we have not closed the ring yet, but I've drawn it in a way where you can very clearly see the general architecture of the ring. Okay, so the idea when this ring structure closes is that these electrons form a bond here. And then the electrons in the double bond end up popping up to that oxygen, which becomes an alcohol. But the key to this is recognizing that when this bond forms, this oxygen can end up pointing up or it can end up pointing down. And the reason behind that is based on the three-dimensional structure of these sugars, whether the oxygen attacks from the top or from the bottom. But the big punchline is that the orientation of this alcohol group that forms is dependent on the direction at which that oxygen attacks. Okay, So we can actually end up with two different forms of glucose. We can end up with a form where we have the alcohol pointing down, or we can end up with a form where the alcohol is pointing up. So when we name our sugars, we need to come up with a way of implying which direction that alcohol is oriented. Okay, and we use an alpha and beta association. Okay, alpha always means pointing down. So this is the alpha orientation of that alcohol group, okay? And over here, this is the beta orientation of the alcohol group. And this carbon, the one that can adopt the alpha or the beta orientation is known as our anomeric carbon. And every single sugar has an anomeric carbon. The thing that distinguishes it is it's the carbon in the cyclical form that can adopt a, a orientation where the alcohol points up or the beta orientation or the alcohol points down in the alpha orientation. 
okay? And it's always gonna be the carbon that has the carbonyl in the linear form, okay? So this carbon that contains the carbonyl ends up being the anomeric carbon in our cyclical form. Okay, so the last thing that we wanna do now is we wanna name each of these two forms of our beta O. So the last thing that we wanna do is name these two forms of our D-glucose, okay? When we do, we wanna include the fact that it's beta and we wanna include the fact that it's in the pyranose form. So we name this beta d gluco pyranose, okay? Beta telling us that this alcohol group points up, D telling us about the orientation of that alcohol in the Fischer projection, gluco telling us it's glucose, and pyranose telling us it's in the cyclical pyranose form. Likewise, in the alpha orientation, the only thing that changes is it's now alpha D glucopyranose. Okay, so that's how we name sugars in their cyclical form. Let's try this one more time with fructose. So as I did with glucose, I drew fructose in its linear form, but adopting a structure where we can very clearly see the ring architecture, okay? We know that the ring closes, the sugar cyclizes, by this oxygen making a bond with our anomeric carbon. And when that happens, we can either have this alcohol group pointing up or we can end up having this alcohol group pointing down. So when the ring closes, we can have one of two forms being adopted. When the alcohol group points up, we name this beta D fructo, and now this is a furan ring, so fructofuranose. When the alcohol group points down, this is alpha D fructofuranose. Okay, so that's really it for naming the cyclical form of sugars. When you do so, you need to establish whether the anomeric carbon has the alcohol group pointing up or down, and that tells you if it's in the beta or alpha orientation, and you need to figure out if the ring is a five-membered ring, that's a furanose, or a six-membered ring, that's a pyranose.